one of these ladies runs the largest employment agency in the world. What is your name, please? My name is Marjorie Hurst. My name is Marjorie Hurst. My name is Marjorie Hurst. Only one of these ladies is the real Marjorie Hurst. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Johnny Carson, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Kitty, I can't properly tell you just what joy it gives us all to welcome you back to our panel. Thank you, Bud. Thank you so much. Great, great joy. Good evening and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Salem Cigarettes. Good evening to you, panel. Well, Good buddy. evening, Will you call your <laughs> Oh, sir. how formal can you be? Would you kindly be gracious enough to open up your affidavit envelopes, remove the affidavits they have from for the first time tonight, and follow along as I read. I, Margaret Hurst. And the head of Brook Street Bureau of Mayfair Limited, the largest employment agency in the world. Starting after World War II with a borrowed working capital of 50 English pounds, I built my organization, which today employs some 7,000 people in over 40 offices in England, Australia, and the United States. I deal only in office and secretarial help. Among my clients are most of the largest British and American corporations. We interview and accept for placement some quarter of a million applicants each year. Signed, Marjorie Hurst. <laughs> Ladies, are you quite comfortable and ready to play our game? All right, panel, you heard them, as did I, all claiming to be Marjorie Hurst who runs the largest employment bureau in the entire world. And let's start this first round of questioning with Johnny Carson. Johnny? I don't believe I've ever started before, have I? <laughs> <laughs> haven't you really? No, I haven't. <laughs> uh, Miss, Miss Hurst or Mrs. Hurst, number two. Uh, can you tell me who runs the Edwards Employment Agency in Philadelphia? That I don't know. It's my brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's Very true. Sorry. That's true. Every little bit helps. Uh, you say you started with uh, 50 pounds, number three? Uh, yes. 10 shillings equals what? Half a pound. Uh, number one, how much is half a crown? Half a crown is two and sixpence. Uh, uh, number two, uh, what should a good secretary know if I wanted to hire a secretary? I beg your pardon? What are some of the qualifications you should look for in a good secretary? Well, um, basically, they have to be extremely efficient in their shorthand typing and get along very well with people and have a good appearance of the basic can you and be able to read and write yes uh kitty number one can you tell me where your offices were in mayfair in mayfair they're in brook street they're at 47 davies what street. hold what uh, uh very fine hotel is in brook street uh well browns is thank there. you number two what is greg that is one of the well, it's, it's, a, it's a system of typing Thank in shorthand. Thank you. Number three, you have people from all over the world. Who do you consider the most difficult bosses to please? Women, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> but among the men, which nationality are the most difficult to please? Oh, all of them. None more than others. Tom. Number three, which are the easiest to please? <laughs> oh, number three. Um, I think I'm the easiest boss to please. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't come here for a straight answer. Uh, number three, what's a tweeny? Do you know? A three again, sorry. Three again, yes. What is a twee? Tweeny. Tweeny. A tweeny. A tweeny. tweeny. It's a maid between uh, um, upper and lower. Isn't that funny? It's called a tweeny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I wanted, to, number one, if I wanted a housekeeper while I were in England, now, now I know you handle office help, right? What would I do? Well, how would I go about getting a housekeeper or a houseman? Well, you'd ask us and we'd get them for you. You, don't, you do deal in other than, than uh, office help, is that true? Well, we deal in everything that we can be helpful to Americans. How nice of you. Thank you. Peggy. Uh, number three, uh, what is a char? A char is a, a, a char lady, is a, a lady who comes in and works 
for you um, by the hour. Uh, number two, uh, what square is the Carlton Tower Hotel located on in Carlton, London? The Carlton, the Carlton Tower. The Carlton Tower, uh, Barclay Square. Thank you. Uh, number one, what is the capital of Queensland, Australia? Brisbane. Thank you. Well, I guess that's it. We've got a little You're geographical wide, information. Wide, wide, wide. Oh, my a little, goodness. <laughs> little information about domestics, and so will you all uh, mark your tweenies now. And uh, let's see what we have by way of a vote. Do so now without consultation. And vote for number one, number two, or number three. Of course, our team of challengers will receive the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. Everyone set? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I uh, voted for number three, bud. I, I, I'll tell you why. She didn't give any wrong answers, you understand? So, I mean, I thought her answers were correct, quite correct. And, uh, and yet there was a certain reluctance on her part about being called upon. Sometimes the real one is a little reluctant to give answers, so I voted for number three. Does that make any sense to you? No, Fred? but it's a good, good reason. Are we on the uh, same wavelength? I don't know. <laughs> Peggy, your vote. Well, I voted for number three as well because I thought number one and number two both gave me wrong answers. One is on the, uh, the Carlton Towers in Cadogan Square, and I don't think Brown's Hotel is on Brook Street. So I voted for number three. I didn't ask about any hotels. <laughs> Johnny. Well, they're all obviously British or English. This is what's very confusing, because uh, they knew uh, all these things. I, I, I'm, I'm going to take a flyer on number one. Okay. <laughs> and Kitty, what about your about? I voted for number three. I thought they all gave excellent answers. I do think that uh, Brown's Hotel is on Brook Street. And, uh, but I voted for number three because she said women are the toughest bosses, <coughs> and I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we have it now. We found out how we vote and uh, our reasons for it. Let's find out now whether we're right or wrong, whether the reasons are valid or not, as we learn which one of these three ladies is the lady who runs the largest employment bureau in the world. Will the real Marjorie Hurst, please stand up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I must say, you, you have to agree, I think, that your two compatriots here did uh, rather well. Uh, Except that I don't deal in domestic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I see. So no jobs for them? No. <laughs> Number one, could you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Kathleen Ma, and I'm a secretary, and I'm looking for a good permanent job. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, number two, your name and what you really do, please? My name is Lady Iris Mountbatten, and I'm a housewife, and I have a little boy, and I also am looking for a good permanent job. <laughs> 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 You I'm offer them both jobs. Yeah. You're all set, yeah. ladies, before the evening is out. And furthermore, uh, I'm afraid the panel was a little bright tonight. Started off real well with three correct, only one incorrect. That means a total of $250. But if we made up for it or more than did so with the fun, you've given us great pleasure, too. On your way out, of course, from Salem Cigarettes, a carton of Salem for each of you. Thank you, ladies, for being with us. Thank Good night. <laughs> God bless. In the next 60 seconds, we invite you to come with us into the land of springtime. Now, just watch this beautiful film. How green is this day in springtime? How clean and clear is the air? Softly refreshing as the taste of a Salem cigarette. For Salem, air softens every puff with special high-porosity paper. You take a puff. It's springtime. Salem gently greets your taste with a smoke that's cool and refreshing. And at the same time, you get the taste of fine, rich tobaccos. No wonder Salem is America's fastest growing cigarette by far. Menthol fresh, rich tobacco taste. Modern filter too. Now, more delightfully than ever, Salem refreshes your taste. <laughs> now may I present our next team of challengers.
What is your name, please? My name is Harold F. Kaiser. My name is Harold F. Kaiser. My name is Harold F. Kaiser. Do you follow along with your copies of this affidavit panel? I, Harold F. Kaiser, recently returned from an unexpected and unscheduled ocean voyage. Although I have traveled thousands of miles aboard commercial vessels, Navy ships, and luxury liners, this was the first time in many years that I have been more than 25 miles from shore. I am a Sandy Hook pilot. It is my duty to safely guide ships of all sizes and all nations in and out of New York Harbor. On March 6th, I was on the bridge of the superliner United States, taking her down the channel outbound for Europe. When we got to Ambrose Lightship, where I was supposed to get off, the wind was blowing better than 70 miles an hour. The sea was so heavy that the pilot boat could not come alongside to pick me up. So, I sailed for an involuntary European vacation with very little money, no passport, and only the clothes on my back. Signed, Captain Harold F. Kite. All right, panel, you've heard these gentlemen all claiming to be Harold Kaiser, ship's pilot extraordinary. We'll start this cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Number one, if you were guiding a ship uh, south, would you pass Sandy Hook or the Barnegat Light Ship? I would pass Sandy Hook. Number two, do you agree with that? If you were going south? That's correct. Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook. Number three, what happened to Ellis Island? Ellis Island is still there, but it's no longer the immigration center, if that's what you mean. <laughs> Number one, what's the name of the captain of the um, uh, United States? John Anderson. Number two, do you know the name of the purser? Mr. Garrig. Hmm. Uh, number three, when you got to Europe, where did you land? In France. And what did they do when you got there? What did I do? Nothing. What did they do? I could have gone ashore, but I didn't. Tom. Oh, oh I see. Just, uh, uh, number two, you seem to, uh, you fellas know the officers on this thing. I wonder if by chance you know which uh, United States ship's officer Gerald Gomberg is. Number two? I don't know. Do you know number three? No, I don't. Number one? Hmm. No, I do not. Number one, where'd you get your tan, may I ask? Uh, in the outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> I see, not like a mushroom, eh? <laughs> number three, uh, does the channel shift? Does the channel shift? Yes. At time. And how do you, number three, how do you measure the depth of the channel? Well, we don't measure it, it's on charts. <laughs> how, how is the channel depth measured, do you know? I'm sorry, I don't understand any question. How is the depth of the New York Channel measured? In feet, is that the question? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what no, you're trying to I get I was at. talking about in relation to the fact that it shifts from time to time. Peggy Cass. Uh, number three, after you got to Le Havre, did you go to Southampton, England? That's right. Did you get off the ship at Southampton? For a very short time. You, did, you didn't get to London? No. I see, thank you. Uh, you don't know where Brown's Hotel is. <laughs> <laughs> number two, how many dining rooms, uh, uh, dining saloons on the United States? That's what they are, saloons. <laughs> I, think, I think three. Thank you very much. Number one, what are the sister ships of the United States? Well, uh, we have the Constitution, and that is the only one of the comparable size. Thank you. And what is the sister ship? What are the sister ships of the United States? Number three, what are the sister ships of the United States? Same answer. Thank you. Uh... Johnny. Number two, would you box a compass for me? Would I do it? Yes. North, north by east. North, northeast. Northeast by east. Number three, can you box a compass for me from nine points abaft the starboard beam? Start there. I'm sorry. That's what I figured. <laughs> uh, that's, that's all right. It's, it's kind of complicated anyway. Uh, number one, what's a sea anchor? I beg your pardon? What is a sea anchor? A sea anchor is a, an anchor that is put out uh, to hold a ship into the wind. Uh, number two, what is the difference between a nun and a spar buoy? Nun buoys are red, and the spar buoy is generally a wooden buoy. All right. Kitty? Oh, that's it. We're going around oh, again, aren't we? I'd like to ask more questions. No, I'm one. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Only one, one bell rang, so I thought we were going around again, but I guess we weren't. So time is up, and time now, of course, only to mark your balance. Would you kindly do so? Without consultation, vote now, please, for number one, number two, or number three. Okay, all set. All ballots marked. Tom, you ready? For whom did you vote? I voted for number two because... Uh, he, he, he gave some fairly quick and responsive answers, and uh, 
he looks like the kind of a fellow who might be piloting ships in and out of New York Harbor. Peggy. Uh, I voted for number two because number one has such a good sunburn he couldn't get that in a storm at sea. <laughs> and number three, uh, I didn't think it was the Constitution was, that was the sister ship. I thought it was a completely different line and I didn't ask number two that. So I voted for number two. <laughs> Johnny, your vote. Uh, I voted for number one uh, because of the, uh, of the sea anchor answer. Uh, if, if, if I'm wrong, uh, the Navy is never going to recall me, but... Uh... <laughs> and Kitty? I voted for number two because of your question about uh, boxing the compass, which I can't do. <laughs> so I figured that... Uh... Neither can number two. Oh, no! Oh, no! I'm no kidding. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> Sounds like we're heading in an interesting direction, anyway. Because I know all those tugboats are called Moran, and he looks kind of Irish. But I voted for number two. <laughs> all right, there again, we come to our moment of resolution, and as we approach the truth, let's see whether we duck away from it or whether we center right in on it, as we learn which of these three gentlemen is the real ship pilot traveler extraordinary. Will the real Harold F. Kaiser please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> you may have to, you may have to wind up boxing more than a compass before you get out of here tonight, Johnny. Then the other two. Now, number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Uh, my name is Bob Lewis. I'm with the Nevins Company in Clifton, New Jersey. We make folding cartons. <laughs> and number three, your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Ken Norris. I manage U.S. specialties. We manufacture, import, and distribute dog and cat specialties. Thank you. Good job. Well, we check our score this time, and again we find the panel was reasonably smart with three out of four, right? Meaning only one incorrect at $250, and that's the total for you gentlemen, $250 from Salem. And of course, on the way out, you'll receive a carton of Salem cigarettes. We thank you for lending your time and your good natures to us, and hope you enjoyed the experience. Good night. God bless. just a minute to take a look at this delightful film and discover a new world of springtime. Most gentle of the seasons is springtime, all softness so green and fresh. And you'll find springtime's gentle ways in the taste of a Salem cigarette. Salem air softens every puff. Its special high porosity paper breathes in fresh air to refresh your taste. Take a puff. It's springtime. And Salem's springtime freshness is combined with full, rich tobacco taste. Most refreshing, most flavorful. No wonder Salem is America's fastest growing cigarette by far. Menthol fresh, rich tobacco taste. Modern filter too. Now more delightfully than ever. Salem refreshes your taste. Now may I present our third team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Daisy Eppermanis. My name is Daisy Eppermanis. My name is Daisy Eppermanis. You follow along again panel with your copies of this affidavit as I read. I, Daisy Eppermanis, came to this country from Europe when I was 12 years old. Because I happened to be the 150,000th displaced person to arrive here, my family and I were whisked off to Washington, D.C. for a ceremony with President Truman. After we settled down, I went to high school, to college, and finally through law school. I was appointed to the bar in December, and in January of this year, I got my first job. I am Deputy Assistant Attorney General of the State of New York. Signed, Daisy Eppermanis. <laughs> Three mighty attractive young ladies. I know you'll agree, panel. This time, each one claiming to have a very interesting story and to be Daisy Eppermanis, Deputy Assistant Attorney General of New York State. 
We start this round of questioning with our own Attorney General, Peggy Cass. <laughs> uh, uh, number one, is Daisy Eppermanis a Greek name? No, it's Lithuanian. Thank you. Uh, number two, uh, who is the Attorney General of New York? Louis Lefkowitz. Louis Lefkowitz. Yes. Uh, number three, what political party does Mr. Lefkowitz belong to? Republican. Thank you. Uh, number two, uh, isn't that very fast to just get out of law school and get to be the assistant attorney general right okay. away? I was uh, very lucky. Uh, number three, were you in the top 10% of your class? Yes. Uh, number one, where did you go to law school? Harvard. Harvard Law School. Number three, did you go to Harvard Law School? No. <laughs> Johnny! I don't know why I'm asking anything tonight. Uh, <laughs> number two, what is the difference between an affidavit and a deposition? An affidavit is uh, the sworn statement of the, uh, of the attorney or the client as to the truth of, of the uh, matter that's uh, sworn to. Is a deposition voluntary? Um, Number three, can, can, you tell, can you tell me that? Is a deposition voluntary? Uh, yes. And an affidavit is not? Uh, well, yes, it is. Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't get your question. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> She's a prosecuting lady, not a listening lady. <laughs> Number three. Uh, Buffalo. Buffalo? University of Buffalo. Uh-huh. Number one, what is the ladies college connected with uh, Harvard? Right, sir. Number two, what is a tort? A tort is in any civil action except contract. Number three, what is the difference between a misdemeanor and a felony? Felony is uh, criminal. Well, felony is uh, more um, serious than the misdemeanor is minor. Number one, do you believe in capital punishment? I don't think I should answer that. That's sensible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, do you know a lady um, called Florence who's in the narcotics division? Who's also an attorney? Number two? Do no, you? I yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to give anything away. <laughs> Tom Boston. Uh, number one, what famous uh, syndicated New York columnist is a member of the bar? Do you happen to know? No, I don't. You know number two? No, I don't. Number three? No, I don't. Leonard Lyons? No, Leonard Lyons is a lawyer. I'm surprised. A very famous columnist. Uh, number two, who is Irving St. Paul? I won't use the title, I've, just the names. I've heard, I believe he's an attorney. I'm sorry, that's about all I know. Number three, do you happen to know who Irving St. Paul is? Well, uh, he's been written up in the papers lately. He's, I think he's a judge. Uh, number one, do you have anything further to add to that? Yes, he's a very famous and brilliant judge. I was on jury duty with Irving St. Paul, and he's great. Oh, boy. What an actor. <laughs> <laughs> and the time has come, as the walrus said, for you to not talk of many things, but simply to get to the business of marking a ballot. So will you do so, please? Oh, Without consultation. How can we possibly tell which one it is? I don't know. That's your problem right now. And vote as you do so for number one, number two, or number three. Three ballots are marked, waiting for time. How can we tell who it is? I, I don't, don't understand. They all gave good answers. Well, I voted for number two, since you're all waiting for me, <laughs> because she gave such a wonderful uh, uh, kind of legal answer to Bud's. But I wanted to vote for number one first, and then uh, number three, because uh, she's so... Um... <clears throat> Which one did you select? Well, I voted for number three. I don't know why, except number two knew an awful lot, but not quite enough. <laughs> I don't know. I voted for number three. Attorney Carson. Well, I could vote for all of them and lose tonight. I, <laughs> I should vote for number two. I voted for number three because she was evasive and shifty. And <laughs> Kitty, which one did you select? I voted for number one. I think they're all studying to be lawyers because they gave marvelous answers. Gee, they sure did. But I think it's number one, and I think um, because she was very, very discreet about not wanting to answer about capital fine. It was very quick thinking. She's got an attorney's mind. All right, there we go now. And let's see whether we're right or wrong and how our mind <laughs> made this entire thing resolve itself as we learn which one of these ladies is the real Deputy Assistant Attorney General of New York. Will the real Daisy Eppermanis Please stand up. 
problem that seemed to bother you and you're, you're guessing and everything you guess right. Can you imagine yeah. that pretty little thing is a junior assistant U.S. district or whatever? <laughs> imagine she'd raise havoc with a jury, I'll tell you that. Let's oh. find out about the other two. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Carol Weiner. I'm an associate editor at Cavalier, which is a man's magazine. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, may we have your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Monica Erickson, and I'm a dentist assistant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. I thought one of you were going to prove to be Perry Mason, at least. <laughs> well, let's check on the score now and see what we have. It's a little different this time. The panel wasn't quite as smart. You really came close to fool fooling them 100%. There were three this time, two, but three incorrect, and only one correct. That means three times $250, ladies. Not a bad haul. $750 from Salem Cigarettes and a carton of Salem for each of you. Hope you had fun. You brought us a good time. Good night to you, and God bless you. And now a word from Carter Hall. If you're a pipe smoker, you probably started by trying many different pipe tobaccos. Then, as your taste developed, you learned that the secret is to balance mildness and aroma without overdoing one or the other. Well, today you can have perfect balance. Perfect balance is in a distinguished new blend called Carter Hall. It's a comfortable pipe mixture at a most comfortable price in reach of every pipe smoker. Carter Hall has smooth, gentle mildness plus a tempting aroma. Not too much of one or too little of the other, but mildness and aroma in perfect balance. That means Carter Hall is a tobacco you can stay with, be comfortable with. Try this distinguished new mixture of bright and burly tobaccos. Carter Hall has both mildness and aroma perfectly balanced for your smoking comfort. Well, that's all we have time for tonight, except to remind you that everyone needs something strong to build on and to find new strength for your life and that of your family, too. Worship together this week at your church or your synagogue. Just make it a weekly habit. Worship is one of those things that feels friendly when you walk in and life always looks better when you walk out. Good night to you, panel. Good night. Good night, good night Bud. Bud Collier saying good night from Salem Cigarettes and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Hi, this is Carol Williams. Have you heard about the new amusement park called Pete and Gladys? You can get there next on most of these stations. Tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by Salem, the cigarette that refreshes your taste. This is Johnny Olson saying good night for To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded.